What's good YouTube, it's Tim here and today I want to teach you the monkey press. So maybe now you can see why it's called the monkey press. I know it looks a little bit funky. So I'm just going to break it down a little bit and share a few reasons why I really like this move and then I'll explain how to do it afterwards. So for me, the monkey press, if you think of any pressing move from the shoulder, normally you've got things like strict press, right? Whether you've got a barbell or a kettlebell, where you're trying to focus very locally on the shoulder muscle. Then you've got a thing like a push press, where you use a bit of bounce from the legs to start the movement off to towards the shoulder, just to give it that little bit of started motion. Now for me, this is the next step beyond that. Not only will we use the legs, but we're also using two halves of the body mixed with rotation to generate some force to get the press to go. We separate the shoulder and the hips and we've got some core involvement here. We're learning to control the core and drive from the core. And so I consider this more functional than a normal uh, press or even a bent press because we can run this through a locomotive filter because we've got this contralateral motion going. When we walk, we walk like this. With the monkey press, it's that exact same functional pattern happening within the core of the body between the shoulders and the hip. In some ways, I consider this a type of sophisticated strength training. Yes, you can go local and do local strength. I think that's great. That's one end of the spectrum. Now I want to go to the under, other end of the spectrum where we use the whole body as one system, as one unit to make things happen. So we've got counter levers with the other arms. We've got the obliques getting involved. We've got the lats. We've got lengthening out of one side, getting full range of motion out of that side by getting full contraction on that side. So it's a really full whole body system movement. So I'm going to give it a go. All right. Now to start off with, you might want to get used to the coil action of the body without a weight, or maybe use a light weight if you want to begin, but I'll just demonstrate it without a weight. I'm going to put all my weight on my left leg so that I can lift my right leg off. So to do that, I'm having to sit into that hip. My left side is lengthened, so my left shoulder is lifted and my left hip is driving down. So there's this length on that one side, which means my other side is shortened. And my right, so my right shoulder is going to my right hip and my right hip is kind of leaning forwards a little bit. So I'm in this kind of, you can imagine I'm racked here. And then what we want to do is we're up steering, almost this, this 180 line north to south with the forearms here. Not quite though. And then I'm going to drive down with my right leg as I press up with my right arm. And along with that, I'm going to use my left elbow to drive down and compress using my left oblique. And as I do that, that left hip's going to come. And so the weight's going to swap from my left side long to my right side. And you can see it's almost like crawling or climbing a ladder, this kind of action, which relates to running and locomotion. So grab a lightweight if you want to now, wrecked, driving through with the knuckles, and really let it sit on the hips. So normal kettlebell, shoulders level like that. You might be used to that, right? You might be used to a push press. I mean, look, what's, what's the arm do when we're doing a press? Do we do that? Naturally, people do that. Just instinctually, that feels better to balance. Now, if we just lean into that, what's instinctual, what's balanced, if I allow the kettlebell to sink in, and I allow that leg to lift up, now I've got two free limbs. You can imagine shot put, right? So I've got these two free limbs, which I can use now free as counter levers. So this arm can swing down to the earth with gravity and this leg can stamp in. So kettlebell's in my right hand, but my right leg's off the floor. So this side's my short side and this side's lengthened. I've got really nice pelvis tucked here as well. Really good strength going off in the lower back and in the abdominals here. Elbow comes down, heel goes down and I drive up. Now I'm balanced on that other leg. I've got a free hand and a free leg. If I've got the last mango and someone still wants it, I could still fight them off, right? So another beautiful thing here, when I'm able to balance like this, the weight is then through my bones as much as possible. I'm not putting torque at an awkward angle through the joints. I'm stacked on the bones. I've got freedom to move with these limbs. Look at the length. We're getting full range, learning to lengthen that whole right side. You could even come up onto the ball of the foot if you want to get even more length. 
And I'd say just hang out in the beginning, hang out at the end of each position and really reach through it. That feels so nice. And you've got your lateral line going off from the fascial slings, you've got your lateral line and then we're coming down. So we're using the, the spiral line, cross body and the lateral line, both working together to make this happen. Another good way to practice it that I'd advise is maybe with your eyes closed as well in each position and just feel around for what feels balanced. Feel, can I move my body? Can I create any tension anywhere that will take weight off of a hot spot? So for me, I'm not arching the back like that. Tucking the pelvis under really helps support and set the weight so it stacks neatly through the leg. And as we come down, we lower it, exhale. You see the opposite arm wings up. This is just, it's more comfortable here than here. Once you practice it a little bit, it feels the most intuitive. That's the weird thing about it. In the beginning, it can feel counterintuitive until it becomes more intuitive than what you used to do. See the cogs? Cogs happening. Really fun move to try. I'd say try it slowly, explore the positions, try it with your eyes closed, try it with a mirror, and finally try it with a step up. This is where you feel the rubber meets the road, where the cookie crumbles. So if it's in my left hand, my left leg is on the step. And as I drive down with the left leg, I drive down with the right elbow. I'm really like Superman punch into the sky. And there you really feel the cogs of the body this jumping leg takeoff. You're getting strong through the jumping leg. You're really loading the outside of that hip because we're coiled on that side. We're properly loading the leg. We're not just neutral in the middle. We're going to the end range. We're filling the edges of our body, using it the way it was designed. Jumping leg takeoff, punch, throwing, shot put. Incredibly functional. How would I program it? Well, in the beginning especially, I would say really get used to the technique, get used to the positions at the start and at the end and the transition in between. Get used to using the body as a full system so that it's not just coming locally, we're using the global network of the body. Then as you get better at it, you get more comfortable. Maybe do three sets, build the weight each set as you go. Do some with a step up. Maybe do all three sets on a step up. That felt really good. Maybe do one set with your eyes closed, one set with a mirror, one set with a step up. And after three or four sessions, no doubt you'll be walking up the stairs and you'll feel that explosive power coming from your legs. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video and you like this type of content, please let me know in the comments and I'll make more videos like this on other types of kettlebell patterns using the same biomechanical advantage of the coiling core. If you wanna learn more from me and about the biomechanics that I've got to teach, well, I've got the School of Biomechanics. I'll link that down below. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.